bold and understanding here. Just want to get my post analysis on this Lomachenko and uh, George Camboso's fight. Uh, congratulations to Vasily Lomachenko as he dominated Camboso's. I mean, it wasn't really a surprise to me or pretty much anybody. I, I thought this fight was going to be a one-sided ass whooping regardless. But anyway, uh, congratulations to Loma. Um, the one thing I can say about Loma is uh, he's one of the few guys that don't duck smoke. That don't say, hey, let shit marinate. That, you know, he's going for, he's fighting champion after champion. I don't even really see Loma taking tune-ups like that. He might have had one, two, maybe one or two tune-ups in his whole career. I don't even think he even had two tune-ups. I think he might have had one tune-up. Some people might say George Cambosos was a tune-up. You know, he was a one-hit wonder. And that might be the case, but, you know, this one-hit wonder did when, um, you know, all the titles or three out of the four titles or whatever, you know, this whole franchise shit, I don't know. But he did, you know what I'm saying, he, he was a champion before. And also tonight, they actually fought for the IBF vacant title. So, I mean, it was no choice in this matter. So, you know, the winner was going to be the champion anyway. But Loma did his thing. Even at 36 years old, he's on the back side of his career. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, he doesn't have that many professional fights. But at the end of the day, he actually has a lot of wear and tear on himself because all those amateur fights he had, we're talking about over 400 something amateur fights. And um, of course he started his professional career late, but like I said, when you got a lot of wear and tear on your body, it doesn't matter if it's amateur or pro, it's still a lot of wear and tear. And then on top of that, fall of time also takes place at the end of the day. And he did stop George Camposos in the 11th round. Now, what I see, people be campaigning, trying to get the Loma fight now, like a Tank Davis, a guy who basically avoided Loma seven years, for the past seven years, he avoided Lomachenko, and all of a sudden now Loma is like, like I said, on the backside of his career, Tank talked about he wants to fight Loma, and shit, does, shit just doesn't make any sense. It was like, where was that energy at seven years ago? Where was that energy at five years ago? Heck, where was that energy at three years ago? You know what I'm saying? Like, why didn't Tank push for that fight with Lomachenko? Because he didn't think he was ready. Now, all of a sudden, he got Loma next after the whole Frank Martin deal. He ain't messing with that nonsense. He used to talk that other side of the street bullshit. You know, to put Tank in a witness protection. And, and don't get me wrong, Tank is a very skilled, you know, boxer and whatnot. But he and his team didn't have confidence in beating Lomachenko when Lomachenko was younger. Now they cloud chasing Lomachenko. You know what I'm saying? You know, after his one, especially now he's 36 years old. So, again, congratulations to Lomachenko. Um, it will be interesting to see who's, who he's going to be fighting next. I know the rumors was flying around about possibly Shakur Stevenson or the winner of the Navarrete and Baranchik fight. And then now you see Tank trying to throw his name in the hat. But we shall see at the end of the day. With that being said, you're watching Bold and Understanding. Read, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to end the night with family. Peace.